Shalom Hebrews and Hebrews, welcome to the channel. This is Oldfield Disciple, enjoying another Arctic cold day with snow and ice. Today we are not going to read our, our per se scriptures as we've been going through. I'm going to actually, um, we're going to do cruising with Jesus and we're going to ride, I'm going to drive to around them on different leases and I'm going to explain a few concepts. Let me flip the camera around. Um, let's look at something. I want you to focus in. This is um, Acts chapter 15. What I have highlighted here. I want you to pause the video, take a screenshot of it. We're going to talk about this right here. And then you're going to need to, um, let me get moving. You're going to need to go and um, Greek out those words. Take those words back to Greek and figure out what Paul is actually telling them there. Now, let me give you a, a rundown of what Acts chapter 15 is speaking about. Paul is being um, attacked for not having the Gentiles get circumcised in Christ. Or in, 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 in Yahweh, and Paul says, um, "We don't, we don't want to force this upon them as they're coming to Elohim. Uh, they don't know nothing about our 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 commands, our covenants, our Torah. Let's bring them into the. Let's bring them in. Let's teach them who Yahweh is, and then we'll let them decide." Here are the commands that we need to let them know. Because he's talking to a, a, a Gentile um, group of believers there. They're dealing with Gentile believers that um, strangle animals. They drink their blood in ceremonies. Um, they, they worship idols. And these are the serious things that these, these Gentile believers are doing. And so Paul says, let's teach them not to do that because that's what they're doing. It would be the same thing as in this culture is if we brought a, a, a group of people in um, from Mexico and we said, okay, look, these is what, you have to get a social security card. We need you to do that. We need you to not fly the, the, the Mexican flag. Um, some of the things that Mexico does, we don't do here because they're used to doing that and we need to break them of their habits of doing so because that is a direct contradiction of Yahweh's word is what Paul is telling the Pharisees as they are coming down on, on Paul. <clears throat> it's the same argument that we have here today in this culture, in this church, uh, this church age so-called is what uh, many claim it, of baptism. I have heard many people say you can't go to heaven if you're not baptized. Well, that's not true. Nowhere in that scriptures, nowhere in that Bible does it say if you're not baptized, you can't go to heaven. So when a new believer comes into the church, if you put that yoke upon their neck, they may not want to. You may have someone who almost drowned as a youth and is petrified of having their head put underwater. And so you tell them, I'm, I'm going to dunk you in this tank and you'll be made new. All your sins are forgiven and you're giving them this false nomer of what baptism truly is, which I'm going to explain correctly in a minute. This person may say, oh, hell no, I'm out. I'm not doing that. But you bring that same person in and you start teaching them the love and the, the commitment to Yahweh, to God. And the Holy Spirit gets a hold of their heart. They're going to come to you and say, "Hey, I, I, I read here where it says I need to be baptized. I want, I want to do that." Just like in um, Acts chapter eight with the eunuch and Philip, when Philip got done explaining the scriptures of Isaiah to the eunuch, the eunuch seen a mud hole and he's like, "Dump me in that. I don't care. I want this Jesus you just told me about." Okay. Philip didn't start out by saying, hey, we got to find a mud hole and rub you around in it. 
A eunuch would have been like, nah, get out of here, bro. I'm of the queen's majesty. You're not dunking me in no mud. Okay, so we have that argument today of baptism here in the church. And it's prevalent. And some will say, you have to be baptized to go to heaven. Some will say, well, you don't have to be, but you need to be. And, you know, they make a big deal out of something that's not a big deal. You feel me? All right. Now, true baptism is what John the Baptist done, but it goes all the way back to Aaron. If you read in your Bible and you read back of, of Aaron's cleansing before he could go into the temple or the, the, the tabernacle, I'm sorry. Aaron was, was cleansed. All priests had to be cleansed. Well, me and you are priests today because of what Yeshua done. So we need to be cleansed. Now, Aaron did it uh, regularly. John was given the command to dunk in water, to immerse. Immerse in water. <coughs> to all those who proclaimed faith in the Messiah. Okay? So, baptism is a faith in Messiah. You, you, you come to Christ, you come to church for the first time. You start hearing the words, the good news, the gospel of Messiah, Jesus. And then you start reading your Bible. Or maybe you hear a sermon on baptism. Whatever the case, you start exploring it for yourself. Hey, I want that. And so you proclaim to want Yeshua. Now you do a public ceremony in public to profess that proclamation of love to Messiah. And you get immersed in the water. It doesn't cleanse your sins. It doesn't take away your sins. Baptism is not the Messiah. As some Baptist preachers and some, well, I'm sorry, as some preachers would have you believe. Baptism is, is not cleansing you of sin. It ain't doing nothing for you. It has no power in it other than the authority that it carries with Yeshua. If you love me, keep my commands. John 14, 15. What is his commands? Right? I'm going somewhere with this. Trust me. Stay with me. What are the commands? What did Jesus do? Did Jesus keep all the law? Let me ask you that first. Does Jesus keep all the law? And if you say yes, you're wrong. Jesus did not keep all the law. He could not. He was a male. There are laws that pertain to females. Jesus doesn't keep those laws. Okay? Jesus kept the law perfectly. The law. The commands. The covenant. Why did Jesus do so? What was the purpose of Jesus keeping the commands? To, to show us how good he is? Okay, that's 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 a partial answer of yes. To look good for the people? No. Jesus kept the law as a example for you and I who are not able to keep the law. To be an example to someone, a big brother, let's say, to look up to, to be like big brother but also as our substitute to the wrath of God. We're not saved from ourselves. We're not saved from our sins. We are saved from the wrath of Almighty God. That's what we're saved from. And Yeshua, Jesus, saved us from that. Ephesians 2 and 8, we are saved by grace through faith. Are y'all with me so far? All right, I hope so. <coughs> I just watched um, one of the guys I always watch, and he had the same issue. A couple of days ago, I had this issue. I was called, uh, or I was told, quit playing Jew and just read your Bible. It's okay. Uh, first of all, Jew, you don't understand by the way you, your connotation of saying so in your context. You don't understand what Jew means. Uh, why do you hate a Jew, first of all? Why do you get frustrated with Jews? Well, the Jews, 
as a whole dismiss Jesus as being the Messiah. Okay, cool. Those we have issue with. All right, there's, there's Christians who dismiss Jesus just as well. Just because they say the name Jesus does not mean they're talking about the Jesus. I know a whole bunch of dudes named Jesus, which is spelled Jesus. I know a whole bunch of guys with that name. They're not my Messiah. All right, so just because you say the name Jesus don't mean we're talking about the same guy. Don't mean we're talking about the Messiah. So anybody can claim the name Jesus. Right? Same way with Jew. Jew is just one tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel. Jew comes from the tribe of Judah. And the tribe of Judah, the house of Judah, consists of the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. They made up the two southern tribes of Israel. The other 10 tribes made up the north tribe. They're the, the house of Israel, the north tribes. Now, I've made many videos on this. I'm not going to get carried away. But by being told, quit playing Jew, you obviously don't know what you're talking about. Um, you just heard your pastor speak, or you've heard TV evangelists speak, and you're, you're, you're regurgitating rhetoric that you've already heard. Because you've done no research on your own, and you're happy with... I come to church, I went to the altar, I said this little sinner's prayer, Jesus come into my heart, and all my sins are forgiven, and now I go live how I want. That's false. That doesn't save you. When are you saved? Yes. The scriptures tell us that we were, we were anointed, we were chosen by God from before the foundations of the earth. Now, whether my fruits bear, bore out my salvation when I was 27, 32, 35 years old, that's beside the point. Whether my, my fruits and my actions today bear out that I have salvation, that's beside the point. Because tomorrow I could go right back into debauchery, to, to, to sinful behavior, walked away from God, and I've seen men who've done it. I've seen men who were a whole lot smarter than me in the Bible, who were a whole lot more faithful to God than me, turn and walk away. So you explain to me how men like them and Judas Iscariot could walk away from Yeshua. They were not never saved to begin with. That's one. So we are saved from the foundations of the earth. That sinner's prayer means absolutely nothing. Your walk with Messiah that what we what I just highlighted right there in my Bible when we started this video in Acts chapter 15 starting in about verse 7 or 8 um, the, the the bondage or the yoke on the neck that's the walk that's our walk of, of being in bondage to the world does it make sense? alright stay with me I, I, I promise you and so That brings us to the next issue. One scripture that shows that. Let's see. How do I want to present this? I was asked to give one scripture to show why why Sunday's not the Lord's day. Okay. I need you to give me one scripture why you believe Sunday, the first day of the week is the Lord's day. I need you to give me one scripture of why and when and who changed the Sabbath day from the seventh day to the first day. You find me that scripture because I can't find it in there nowhere. You're reading the King James? Awesome. I love the King James. The word day, the first day of the week, the, the disciples assembled, the word day that is put there, if you'll notice, is italicized, meaning that is not in the original writings. They added that word day. So if you go and look at one, that is Mia in the Greek, meaning first in order, 
and go look up week where your, your King James says first day of the week. Go look up week. That word week is Sabbaton. Means between Sabbaths. Meaning evening time. See, because we don't we don't pay attention to the fullness of the Bible. We have to go all the way back to Genesis chapter one. In the beginning, God. And God said, Let there be light. And evening and morning were the first day. God's day starts at evening when the sun begins to set. Not in the morning when your alarm goes off and you wake up and go to work. All right, so Western culture has sabotaged us in understanding the Bible, understanding God's word. Second of all, we in the Western culture look at everything from a linear point of view where the, the Eastern culture sees everything from a cyclical point of view. Everything is cyclical. We see linear from point A to point B to point C. One, two, three, four, five. The, 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 the Eastern culture sees everything in cycles. We have summer. We have fall. We have spring. We have winter. Back over and over. We have January to December and then back over. That's linear but cyclical. Cyclical. Make sense? All right. Stay with me. Um, <clears throat> I get accused all the time. I say it all the time. And it doesn't bother me because Jesus said that those around me will come at me and hate me. And maybe not hate me as I'm going to shoot you or kill you but hate me because I speak the truth to them but they don't hate me they hate him they hate the one who sent him him being Messiah they hated him first and so I know I'm going to go through these issues as I speak the truth so show me where one scripture where Sunday the first day of the week is not the Lord's day. No, you show me one scripture where it changed. And then you, you show me in that scripture who said it. Who has the authority to change God's law. You throw a fit when they take down the Ten Commandments from the courthouse. Why? You don't keep them. You don't love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul. You don't abstain from idols. You don't keep the Sabbath. And you mix and mingle the last two. So really you're only keeping, if at the best, nine, but more than likely probably four. You don't kill, you don't steal, you don't, what lot say lie. Well, lie is not really a sin, bearing false witness against your neighbor. That's the sin. Um, and so, you're, you're, it's like the rich young ruler. Good master, what shall I do to inherit the kingdom? And Jesus says, first of all, no one is good. No, no one but the Father which is in heaven. Now, let me ask you, keep the commands. This is what Jesus is saying. Keep the commands. And he lists the commands. Oh, but he didn't list the Sabbath, see? Okay, here's the deal. Why would Jesus have to, to list that command when they already all did that? It wasn't an issue. The commands he listed were issues. If I told you what you're going to do at work tomorrow and I'm your boss what are we going to do tomorrow boss say tomorrow when you get here I need you to fill up that wheelbarrow full of dirt carry it over there and fill up that big hole and then tomorrow evening when I get there you're not there and I say why are why, where's this guy oh well he said you didn't tell him to get in his car put the key in get dressed first of all get in his car, put the key in, and then drive to work. You didn't tell him that. Well, no shit. 
I knew he was going to get in his car and drive to work. I just was telling him what he needed to do when he got here. That is what Messiah was doing in that scripture verse where he's speaking to the rich young ruler. Just because he didn't mention the Sabbath doesn't mean it's been done away with. Show me a scripture where Jesus done away with the Sabbath. He said, you don't have to do this no more. <clears throat> so, now, back to the, the new covenant. Go look up the word new in covenant. It's renewed covenant. It's stacked upon the already existing covenants. Wow. If we, if we look these words up, it'll begin to come clear. What about Colossians 2? Whenever it was nailed to the cross. Okay, what was nailed to the cross? Can you read on down just a few more verses and see that it was the, the ways of the Pharisees, the dogmas and doctrines of men that Yeshua had nailed to the cross? Uh-oh. We didn't want to read that far, right? We just wanted to read the part where we don't have to do this no more, right? Okay, context is key. So is word study. Now, let me ask you this question. Since we're on this, if Jesus kept all the commands in the covenant of Yahweh perfectly, and he did, so because he did, to be an example for you and I, and to be our substitute for the wrath of God, that was that was to be poured out for you and I for our sin which sin is translated uh, defined in 1 John 3 4 sin is lawlessness sin is transgression of the law man's law or God's law uh, that'd be God's law all right so since Jesus did all this in the flesh when he went to the cross when we go to glory in the new earth, in the new heaven, and we are all appointed our positions after the judgment, are we going to have free-for-all worship when we want, how we want, who we want, celebrate what we want, when we want, where we want, about what we want to celebrate? Is that going to be the mantra of glory or as Christianity defines it, heaven, which is another false nomer. Not all of us are going to go to heaven and be ruling and reigning in heaven. Some of us will be on the earth ruling and reigning. Well, if we're ruling and reigning, who are we ruling and reigning over? Ever think about that when, when uh, Jesus gives a sermon on the mount in Matthew chapter 5? That the meek shall inherit the earth? What does inherit mean? Inherit means that it is yours. It becomes yours because of what your, your forefathers done. For those who come before you've done. So Jesus is going to give us the earth. Give us heaven. He's going to give us a place in, in the creation the new creation is going to give us a place to rule and reign. Some of us. So who are we ruling and reigning over? God? Jesus? No. Angels? No. Men who taught that the law had been done away with. Because if you, if you read on in the Gospels, Jesus says, those who teach the law has been done away with will be least in the kingdom of heaven but those who teach the law is good shall be great in the kingdom of heaven so you've got to read all of this in key context uh oh so i ask you again when the new heavens and the new earth, which Jesus also says, not one jot, not one tittle of the law shall by no means pass away until heaven and earth are destroyed. Has heaven and earth been destroyed? I ask you, no. I tell you, no, it hasn't been. So not one jot, 
not one tittle of the law has been done away with. The doctrines and dogmas of men is what Jesus fought against with the Pharisees. It's the same thing that I am dealing with today. It's the same thing that other pastors, believers, and disciples are dealing with today. It's the same thing that pastors, believers, and disciples dealt with 500 years ago, 800 years ago, since the beginning of mankind. Nothing new is under the sun. And the devil loves to play games with us. He doesn't care that you believe in God. He doesn't care that you proclaim the name Jesus. As long as he can get you twisted to believe the name Jesus is someone else. And you are full of yourself and believe and describe a Jesus that doesn't, doesn't fit in the Bible doesn't walk in the Bible, and he's not going to save you of your sins. If you can be convinced of that, the devil's happy. And that's what he's done with Christianity. That's what he's done with um, Catholicism. That's what he's done with Mormons. That's what he's done with Muhammad and Is Islam. That's what he's done with these militant uh, black Hebrew Israelites. Everyone who claims a denomination has some, some correct and some false doctrine. How about we just be a disciple of the Most High? A student. That's what disciple means. I'm a student of the Most High. I'm a student of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah. I'm a student. And as long as I'm a student, I'm forever learning, right? If I go to college and I'm a college student, I'm learning. I should be. So if I am a student of Jesus, I'm forever learning. Meaning I could be wrong at a certain time in my life. Meaning as I read this Bible, Hebrews 4.12, that the, the word is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, that it should cut even to the asunder of the bone and the marrow, dividing the, the soul, spirit, and flesh, that it can teach in one one sentence and cut you like a knife in that very same sentence. It's what it means. <clears throat> it is the living word of Yahweh. Does that like make any sense whatsoever to, to some of y'all? No, I, I know to some that it's like, yep, it's you're speaking to the choir. I know some it's like, ooh, what? What did he just say? What did he call me? And others are just sitting there like, uh, man, okay. Here's the deal. And, and, and it's happened in my walk in the last 10 years. I tell my church that I have sinned against Yahweh and I have cheated on my wife and committed infidelity and I'm a drunkard and a drug addict. I get patted on the back and told it's okay, brother. We all fall short of the glory of God. Jesus loves you. Thank you. Thank you for encouraging me. Two, three years later, four years later, hey, I read here where it says I'm supposed to, to, to follow the Leviticus diet so me and my wife, we quit eating pork. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. No, absolutely not. And get furious at me because I'm keeping the law. How about the Sabbath? We're going to keep the Sabbath. Absolutely not, you heretic. Show me a verse in the Bible that says this. And the whole Bible says it. Um, how come I can sin and break the law and I get patted on the back? by the church but if I keep the law I'm damn near outcasted it's because the conviction of your heart is trying you that's why when we're convicted of something we automatically turn to anger and wrath that's why So I figured I would do this, this cruising with Jesus because I knew I had about 20 minutes, 30 minutes before I got to this next lease and I'm here now. So in, in finality, 
I'm gonna ask you those three questions, or ask you a few of these questions again. You show me one scripture where the law was changed and Sabbath day from the seventh day to the first day is now correct. And who changed it? Show me that scripture of who changed it and, and what scripture it is that it was changed. How come I can keep the law and get outcasted by the church, but if I break the law, God's commands, I'm encouraged and I'm lifted up and I'm praised for it. And when glory, and then the, the final question, when glory comes, and we'll help you out with this one. When glory comes in, in the new heaven and the new earth, and we're all appointed to our places, in Zechariah chapter 14, it will tell you, those who do not go and keep Sukkot each year, no rain shall fall upon their land. That is speaking in the end times. Zechariah chapter 14. So if, if the law of Sukkot is back in place after the new heaven and new earth, does he have to put in place the Sabbath again new? Or what about if none of these were taken away, we were just blinded and deceived to believe they have been, and they're all in act, in action, even to this day, and we're just not doing it. I urge you, read your Bibles. If you have any questions, I will have my email in the description. Feel free to email me. If you have any comments, feel free to comment in the comment section or email me. And as far as yesterday's video, I told you I'd have a video in the description. I haven't had time to find it. I was out here for 15 and a half hours yesterday um, due to this cold. So I haven't had time, but I will get that video of First Kings, um, the link in, in the description of either today's video or yesterday's video. So look for it. Y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. Y'all have a blessed day. I am the Oldfield Disciple, a.k.a. Pastor Matt. We'll catch you on the next ride.